Hey everyone, welcome to Going to Seek the King. This is your host Ruben, and we're here to talk about our one and only, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Okay everyone, so today we're going to be talking about God's love for you, how much he loved you, the power that he has to transform you, and that one day he will be coming back for us, which is an amazing, amazing uh, gift to us. Um, so, you know, first of all, for those of you who are listening that maybe you are new to the faith or perhaps you've never heard about the story of salvation, let me go ahead and give a quick summary of that. Uh, in the beginning, God created man, you know, and he created him for his own glory to, you know, he created him in his own image and gave man and woman a choice he gave them the choice of either loving him and choosing him or going with whatever the world had to offer uh, he provided everything in this world um, food shelter anything they needed they had glorified bodies so their bodies were incorruptible and you know there was no sin in them they knew no sin so, you know, many people bring this point as a point to debate the Bible or to try to discredit the faith. And they say, if God is so good, why did sin enter the world, you know? And why are so many bad things happening in the world? Well, he gave us the choice to love him. I don't know about you, but I don't want somebody uh, to be forced to love me. I want them to choose to love me. And, uh, you know, if not, it's not true love, you know? So basically, by him giving us free will, we had a choice which way we were going to go. And, you know, unfortunately, man decided to go the ways of the world and we're paying the price because of it. Anything in this world that you see that is bad or evil, we can't blame that on God. We can only blame that on ourselves for, you know, the, or the lust of our own hearts or, you know, the direction that we choose to walk in due to, our you know, bad thinking or anything like that. So that's the reason... That he gave us a you know free choice or free will as some might call it and um we do have the choice we still have that choice today whether or not to love god and accept his love in return or whether we're gonna say no i don't love you and i love the world and i love the things of the world so you know that's how sin entered and and there's always a price to pay you know there's a price to pay for things like sin or anything in this world, you know? So the price for sin had to be a perfect a perfect sacrifice, one without any sin, to be able to cover over our sins. Now, here's the thing. There was no man on earth, even today, there was no man on earth that had no sin. So there was no one that was able to take our place except for one being and that's god because he's the only one who is perfect and good and so he came down in the body of jesus christ he made himself into man um, he was born of a virgin and he paid for the price of our sin on the cross okay you can read all about it, it was prophesied over 400 years before it happened by isaiah if you read isaiah chapter 53 you'll see where it talks about jesus christ and that was prophesied way before it happened and jesus christ fulfilled all of those prophecies anyway i'll leave that to you to read on your own time but um that's how we were able to be forgiven through what he did on the cross now here's the thing that forgiveness it comes with a choice okay so that choice is whether or not we accept his love so if somebody were to ask you to marry them you know you have the choice to say yes or no you know, you have the choice whether or not you're going to love that person or not. And our human love is flawed, you know, but the love that God has to offer us is not flawed. It's pure. His intentions are pure. He, he wants to care for us. He wants to love us. We're not going to be deceived or, you know, ripped off or, you know, disappointed. He loves us like that's point blank. He loves us. OK, so if, if many of you out there might be feeling like like what is love or that you might not believe in this because maybe you come from a divorced family or you've been divorced yourself or you maybe have suffered some 
type of injustice from other people where they haven't shown you love but they've judged you from the outside and they misunderstood you and they treated you wrong now i don't want you to take it personal and take it as if those people are evil and you know maybe the things they did are wrong you know but remember we have two roads to follow we can either follow god's road or the wor the world the world's road and the world's path and that path is broad and, and wide and they don't really have consequences you know as to how we love each other you know um for them it's like serve yourself and that's it who cares about everyone else you know but not in god's kingdom in god's kingdom you know we put god first and we put others on the same level as we put ourselves and that's the only way it's going to work so anyway um because christ was able to die for us you know he gave the ultimate sacrifice and the bible says that he is the groom and we the believers are the bride so if we pray and ask him to forgive us if we believe in our hearts and we ask him through you know confessing our sins to him and saying god come enter into my heart he will be faithful and he will forgive us and he will save us and at the end of this podcast, I'm going to say a prayer with those of you who want to say the prayer and choose God of your own free will. Um, and I will gladly say that prayer. And if you want to pray with me, it would be great. And uh, the angels in heaven will rejoice. I will rejoice. I'm sure many of our fellow brothers and sisters will also rejoice. Okay. And um, so what what can we say about that you know god gives us the choice to love him like i said he gave us the option to be able to return to him through the sacrifice that jesus christ made on the cross and we have forgiveness through him you know well guess what one day he's coming back for us um he's he said i'm going to my father's house to prepare a place for you and then i'm coming back for you so you can be where i am well that's amazing i don't know about you but this world has nothing to offer that's appealing all it has is death and sin and and you know there's certain things that bring momentary joy but they don't last you know who wouldn't want to be in heaven with god who wouldn't want to be up there and you know be walking with the lord and knowing you know the pure joys of heaven without death and decay and without any sort of evil in our hearts towards anyone you know you can have true relationships with people where you don't have to worry if they're using you or if you know maybe one day you're gonna let them down that doesn't exist up there you know and i'm looking forward to it and as you know as many of you can see even if you're not a believer i know many unbelievers that are like what's going on in the world right now like this is the end of the world and they don't even know what they're saying they don't know the bible they don't know what the bible says about the end of the world you know um but they see and they can feel it's tangible that you can feel what's going on right now with coronavirus with our governments and it's not just the government here in the u.s it's governments all around the world and the you know they're killing people and there's all sorts of corruption and it just seems like we just can't catch a break and why because we're we're living according to man's laws you know we're living a humanistic um in a humanistic society where we are serving ourselves where we please ourselves so that's the that's the consequence that's what comes out of serving ourselves and not caring for one another and that's part of uh what what god teaches us is to be peacemakers and to love on one another and to show kindness and how can we do that by reflecting what he did in us i mean if he forgave so much of what we have done why can't we forgive each other and why can't we give each other se second and third and fourth chances and be able to help each other up when we're you know when we're down in the dumps and we're down in that filth you know and not give up on each other so that's that's something that we have you know we have that hope because christ you know he loved us before we even loved him you know and and through him we can do all things he said he said you'll do greater things than even i did he'll empower us through his holy spirit okay so you know keep that hope keep that that uh that sh that uh hope that he's coming he's returning for us that he loves us that he won't forsake us that he'll never 
um, abandon us because he won't. He's the only one that we can trust in. You know, the, the Bible also says he's like one that sticks closer than a brother. You know, maybe you have a brother. Maybe your brother let you down, but he won't let you down. He sticks closer than a brother. And our parents love us and they will give good gifts to us. Right. But guess what? They're flawed and they mess up sometimes. He's not flawed. Imagine what the things he will do for you, you know, and he's willing to transform you and change you. And he's not there judging you and putting you down and say, oh, like, how many chances do I got to give you? Look at you. You messed up. No, he just wants you to come with a sincere heart of repentance to come to him and say, Lord, I don't want to be like this, but I don't know how to change. I don't know what to do. And he will say, come as you are. Let me help you. And with the power of his Holy Spirit, he'll enter into your life and he'll begin to just change you little by little. Some things will be overnight and some things will take time, but he'll work on you. He'll give you a new heart. He'll give you a new spirit. You'll be a new creation in him. And you'll be able to walk in the spirit and feel what it is to, the, to have the presence of God and to know him. He'll give you a peace that surpasses all understanding. So, you know, now that I've said that, you know, and we see the world going in a direction that's just spinning out of control. You know, this is a time for you to think about it, you know, for you to say, hey, what do I want? You know? Do I want God? Do I want goodness? Do I want somebody that loves me? Or do I want what the world has to offer me? And I want you to seriously contemplate this. Like, think about what the world has offered you. Has it really given you any satisfaction, any joy, any fulfillment? I'm not talking about temporary pleasure or feeling good. I'm talking about true, lasting fulfillment and satisfaction. If, you, if the answer is no, which I'm pretty sure it is, then why not give God a chance? Give him a chance to work on you and to change your life. You know, speak with him and he will speak to you. It's, I made that decision 25 years ago and it's one of the best decisions I've ever made. And I really, really have had so many times where I've prayed and I was the only one in my family that was saved at that time. And I have a twin brother. I have a, a younger sister, six years younger than me. And both my parents are together. You know, they were good people, really good people, but they didn't know the Lord. You know, and I prayed and, and, and God has shown his faithfulness. You know, one example of that is that there's a scripture that says, if you are saved, you and your family will be saved. And I said, Lord, how is that possible? If I'm saved, then me and my family will be saved because we all have our own individual free will. What if they don't choose you, you know? And he didn't, he didn't give me the answer. He didn't explain to me how that works or why it works or, you know, give me a formula or anything like that. All he simply answered me was, your brother will be the first one to come to me. And then your other families will come to me. And, you know, it took about eight years, but finally my brother came on his own to Christ and uh, I was the first person to hear about it. I was rejoicing. I cried. I was so happy that finally, you know, he came to know Jesus Christ. And trust me when I say he he did, it wasn't easy for him. He didn't accept God right away. He continued to live in the world. He continued to do the things that he thought was right, but nothing, nothing brought him satisfaction. All it brought was disaster and uh, it brought some, you know, hurt in his life and things that, that he had to deal with for a really long time, you know. But, you know, thank God through the grace of God, I've seen the transformation in his life. I've seen the change in his life. And it's amazing. And it's not to say that he's perfect because none of us are perfect. But man, he is so much different than what he was before, you know, and uh, and so am I. And and if you turn to Christ, you'll see that you too will be made different. You'll be a new creation in Christ, because that's what the Bible says: that the old man will pass away, and that God will put a new heart in you, a new spirit, and you will be a new creation in Christ. And He will dress you in His in His uh, robes of glory and white, pure robes you know he'll wash you clean from your sins and accept you and 
he says he throws his your sins into the sea and and forgets about them he's not gonna bring them back up or rub them in your face or say hey i saved you what's going on every time you mess up no he's gonna just urge you with love in his heart to for you to just keep going and fight that good fight and keep going well anyway i want to say a prayer for those of you who who want to give christ a try who want to um you know choose to love him and because he already loves you he already chose you if not he wouldn't have come down here if not you wouldn't be breathing the, the breath that you have in your lungs and waking up every morning you know and maybe you don't feel like that maybe you don't feel like like god loves you or christ loves you that's a lie from the enemy the enemy wants you to stay in your despair and your depression and he wants you to accept that lie because he wants you to worship him he wants you to worship him you know satan through your fear and through your suffering and that's what he he gets you know a kick out of that and for him that's the ultimate form of glorifying him it's like yeah i don't trust god i trust you and even though you suffer you continue to trust him so let's repent from that what does the word repent mean but to turn and not go back to it let's let's not trust in in the enemy in the world and in the fear and the lies and the deception and all the things that the world throws at us but let's trust in god and jesus and turn to him and know that there's a hope that there's a glory that we are loved that we are accepted and you know read your bible and see how many examples of god's love there is and there's it's crazy and jesus you know he he walked with us like he you know people may people persecuted him 